Hi there grade nines and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I hope you're all keeping well and I hope you're excited and looking forward to today's lesson. If you are joining us for the first time, a very big welcome and I hope you're going to enjoy the lesson so much that you will continue to watch our lessons in the future. Right, let's get started with today's, today's lesson. Sorry. Um, we are going to do transformation geometry and we are in lesson five in the series. So if this is your first time um, joining us, you can always go back and find lesson one to four and watch those as well. But this is a standalone lesson because today what we're going to look at is enlargements. Okay, so an enlargement is a transformation that produces an image that has the same shape as the original, but it is a different size. Remember, when we transform a shape, the result of the transformation is called the image. Okay, so shapes can be enlarged by what is called a scale factor, and we normally um, refer to that as K, and this means that each side of the original shape is enlarged by the same amount. In other words, it keeps it pro its proportion as it is enlarged. So it's just almost like um, blowing something up. It is equally um, proportionate, just larger than its original um, shape. Right? For example, a shape can be enlarged, enlarged sorry, by a scale of 2. That would mean that the original shape is doubled in size in all ways. Okay. So the center, let me just move down. Actually, maybe up. The center of the enlargement is the point through which the shape is enlarged. And this must always be given. We will use the point of origin as the center of the enlargement for now. But this is not always the case. In other words, you can have a, um, a, cent a point of origin. The point of origin is naught, okay? But the center of enlargement doesn't always have to be the naught. And naught is obviously where the x and y axes cross. Right, let's go on. Just move me down again. Okay, that's better. And there we have our Cartesian plane. So we continue to work on our Cartesian plane um, when we are doing transformations. And remember, we've got the x and the y axis, the x axis being the vertical axis, and the y axis being the, sorry, the x axis being the horizontal axis, and the y axis being the vertical axis. Okay. A, a triangle ABC is given, we're going to find it on our Cartesian plane just now, with A being minus 5 minus 2, B being minus 1 minus 2, and C being minus 3 and 1. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. So A here is minus 5 and actually, yeah, sorry, minus 5 and minus 2. Getting myself totally confused. I'm sorry, grade nines. Um, B is minus 1 and minus 2, and C is minus 3 and 1. So that goes across the x-axis. But we're actually going to transform it and enlarge it around the point of origin, and you will see what we're going to do just now. Okay, so first of all, CD is the height of the triangle. So there we can see that's that line, which is the height of the triangle. And if we count that, 1, 2, 3. So the height will be 3. Okay, so what we need to do first is calculate the area of this triangle. And we all know that uh, the formula for area of a triangle is half base times height. So there we have it. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually just um, substitute in. So what is our base? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to go half times 4 times, as we count it up, the height is 3. And remember, because we're working on the Cartesian plane, we're just going to use units. So we're not going to use actual measurements like millimeters or centimeters, etc. We're just going to use the units as being the blocks. Okay, so half of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 will be 6. Or you can go 4 times 3 is 12. Half of 12 is 6. So there is our area for this triangle. Right, now we want to enlarge, ABC is enlarged through the origin by the scale factor of 2, okay? And as I said in the beginning, when the scale factor is 2, it means actually that your triangle or your shape is going to be doubled in size in every way. Okay, so we, that will give us the image of A1, B1, C1, okay? Triangle A1, B1, C1. 
Right, so if we are given that, that is the triangle that we're given, the area of triangle ABC is 6, we worked that out already. Um, then ABC is enlarged through the origin, through the point of origin, by a scale factor of 2. So to give the image, to give its image of triangle A1, B1, C1. Right, so what do we do? How do we actually do this? Well, we need to double each coordinate. Because if we double each coordinate, it's going to pull that, um, the, the shape, the triangle, out. So it will double the size of each side. And therefore, um, you will see what happens with the area. Okay, so, so A1 now becomes minus 10 and minus 4. Have a look here. The original was minus 5, minus 2. It now becomes minus 10 and minus 4. B, the original, was minus 1, minus 2. It now becomes minus 2, minus 4, because we've doubled both coordinates. C was minus 3 and 1. It now becomes minus 6 and 2. So now we can plot that onto our Cartesian plane. And there you can see. There, let's label it. We've got A1, B1, and C1. And let's have a look and see. This one, A1, is minus 10, and it is minus 4. Um, B is minus 2 and minus 4, and C1 is minus 6 and 2. So each time we've doubled the coordinates, which means that we have enlarged it by the scale factor of 2. Right, so again, we've got the, that ABC was given to us, um, and that B, A1, B1, C1 has got new coordinates, which have been doubled. The area of triangle ABC is 6. We worked that out a while ago. The vertices of the image are two times as far from the point of origin. So if this is the point of origin, um, there's the point of origin, sorry, and that is where vertice C is, is C1 twice as far? Okay, let's have a look. It's 1, 2 and a half across, 1, 2 and a half. So actually, this is 5. C1 is 5 blocks across. Um, and two up, whereas C is three blocks across and one up. So it's not five, sorry, it's six blocks across and two up, whereas, as the coordinates tell us, um, C1 is one block up and it's three blocks across. Okay, so there we can see, if we're drawing in the lines, we can see that C1 is twice as far away from the point of origin as C is, and B um, B1 is twice as far away from the point of origin as B is. So therefore, um, that it is two times as far from the point of origin. And why? It actually makes sense if you think about it, because we've actually doubled the coordinates in each case. Right, so we can also check by determining the ratio of one of the sides from ABC to its corresponding side in the image. Okay, in other words, we're going to say, for example, AB... Um, we're going to look at the ratio of that as to that, as to the original, um, and we're going to see what that ratio is. So we're going to go AB is actually 8, it's 8 units, um, A1, B1, sorry, is 8 units, AB is actually 4 units. So if we go 8 over 4, because that's what a ratio is, then our scale factor is 2. Okay, which we were told in the beginning, but now we're just proving it. We're just working out that it is actually correct the way the image has been drawn. Okay, the next thing you can do is you can also check by calculating the area of A1, B1, C1, and then dividing it by the original area. So we, go, we already know that the original shape's area is 6. We worked that out. So if we work out the area of A, uh, of um a1, B1, C1, we're going to go half base times height. We're now working with this base. So we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And let's see what the height is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so there we have got half times 8 times 6. So we can go half times 8 is 4 and times 6 is 24. Or we can go 8 times 6 is 48 and half of 48 will also give us 24. Doesn't really matter which way around you do it, because as you know, multiplication can be done in any order, because they all multiply together. All right, now, you're going to say to me, 
that 24 over 6 is not going to give me 2. But remember that 24 over 6 is going to give me 4, but that is because its area, it is squared. Okay, so let's have a look. The area of A1, B1, C1 over the area of A, B, C is 24 over 6, which does give me 4. All right, you're absolutely correct. But 4 is actually 2 squared. So actually what we've done is we have doubled the area. All right, so that is what we're looking at there. Okay, because the area um, square rooted will give me 2. Okay, so again, our um, scale is 2. Right, so the scale factor K is 2. The X and Y coordinates in A, B, C are 2 times those in A1, B1, C1. Okay, or rather the A1, B1, C1 are 2 times A, B, C. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so the coordinates of A, B, C are doubled to get A1, B1, C1. All right. Then each vertex of the image A1, B1, C1 is two times as far as the corresponding vertex of A, B, C from the point of origin. Okay, so it's two times as far. This one is twice as far as this one from our point of origin. And the same with the B and the same with the A. Okay, if you were to draw a, a line from the point of origin through A to A1, you will see that A1 is twice as far from that point of origin than A is. Okay, the ratio of the sides is equal to K is equal to 2. Okay, so the scale factor there is, is 2 again. And we worked that out when we worked out the sides, when we said how long is AB, A1, B1, and how long is AB. And they were, A1, B1 was twice as long. Right, the ratio of the areas is equal to k squared, which is equal to 2 squared, and that is equal to 4. Okay, everybody understand that one? All right, remember area is always in um, a square unit, which means that 2 squared will give me 4. Okay, triangle ABC and A1, B1, C1 have the same shape, but are different sizes, which means, guys, that triangle ABC is similar to triangle A1, B1, C1. Remember, it's not congruent. Congruent actually means that everything is the same, but in this case, they are similar because they have most things the same or in proportion, um, but they are not exactly the same size. So they're exactly the same shape, but not the same size. Okay. The mathematical rule for enlargement is X, Y, where k, x, y, okay? So in other words, what you do to the first x, y is re resulted or is a result of whatever that k value is, okay? So for the enlargement, the rule is x, y, where 2, x, y. In other words, what you're doing is you're doubling this first x, y coordinate to get to your enlargement in this case because the scale factor is 2, I hope that makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, please don't forget to send your um, query or your question to grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com or you can go back to the beginning of the video and watch it from the start. Okay, but what all this is doing is what we have done here is doubled the size of the image. So we've gone to the original and we've doubled the size to get the image, I should say. Okay, and we can test it in a number of these ways. So we can test it by looking at the coordinates of ABC as to A1, B1, C1. We can check um, at the vertex of the image and see if they are the same distance or double the distance or what the relationship is between the distance from the point of origin. We can look at the ratios of the sides. Okay, and we can look at the ratios of the areas. We can also even actually look at the ratios of the perimeters, but sometimes that's a bit more difficult when you're dealing with shapes that go diagonally across. All right, right, let's try this. Okay, the vertices of triangle PQR are P is minus 4 minus 2, Q is minus 1 and 7, and R is 4 and 3. Okay. Triangle PQR is enlarged through the point of origin by a scale factor of K to give 
triangle P1, Q1, R1. In other words, it's image. Okay, now we don't know what the K factor is yet, the scale factor. The vertices of triangle P1, Q1, R1 are P is minus 20 minus 10, Q1 is minus 5, 35, and R1 is 20, 15. Okay, so we have been given the vertices in the original shape, and we are given the vertices of the image. So we could probably work out the scale factor. In other words, we could work out the um, value of K. So, first of all, we need to give the value of Q1, R1 over QR. So, Q1, R1 is a side of the image and QR is a side of the original shape. Okay? So, we can also work out the perimeter. As I said, this can be quite difficult to do, um, but it's not impossible to do. But once you've figured out what the K is, what the scale factor is, then um, you can actually work out what the perimeter is if you have the original perimeter. And see the area of triangle P1, Q1, R1 over the area of the original shape, which is triangle PQR. So if you have one of these, you will be able to work out the scale factor and then apply it to the others. All right, so if we give the value of Q1, R1, and QR, um, what that actually represents is the length of the side, but actually what we can do is look at the coordinates and say minus 5 over minus 1 is 5, 35 over 7 also gives me 5, which means that k is equal to 5. So the scale factor is equal to 5, which means then we can apply that scale factor to the perimeter and to the area. But just remember, we can apply it to the area, but we have got to um, square it, which means that it's 25. Okay, right. There's quite a lot to take in, guys. So what I'd like you to do is if you do have any que questions or queries, don't forget to email um, your question or query to grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com or watch the video again and pause it in specific places. Um, so that you can actually internalize what I was telling you. Also, please remember to do the activity that is connected to this video. Um, then you can actually practice all we've done. Um, enlargements can be a bit tricky sometimes, but actually they're not too bad um, if you go step by step, and especially if you can work out that scale factor. So thank you so much for watching today. I really hope to see you again. Keep warm and keep well. Bye-bye for now, guys.